today is the sixth lecture to just to give you a summary of what we have done yesterday yesterday we discussed about uh, so called the condition for the translational equilibrium and uh, the condition for the rotational equilibrium we have made use of this concepts to discuss a few problems and in this process we also came across the concept of the center of gravity and its relation to the center of mass problem today we will continue further uh, <coughs> so far we have been seeing the rotational motion is somewhat similar to uh, linear motion equations why for example uh, what is known as velocity uh, in the case of linear motion its role is taken over by angular velocity d theta by dt etc the uh, the linear acceleration is dv by dt and uh, the angular acceleration is d omega by dt etc today we will continue further uh, so far we have not asked uh, we have not asked uh, rather a very important question uh, in the case of linear motion you have mass the concept of mass which comes in newton's equation everywhere and uh, who takes the role of the linear mass in the rotational motion and so today's topic for discussion is uh, uh, moment of inertia basically this particular lecture moment of inertia and there are two rather important theorems and uh, what are called as uh, uh, parallel and perpendicular axis theorems this is what we are going to focus on and so the question we have already asked is uh, um, what is the what is the analog of mass analog of mass usually it is denoted by m in rotational motion this is the uh, i won't call it as a motivation this is an intriguing question which everybody should ask it will come very naturally and we see uh, what is the answer for it and so there's one more thing uh even yesterday we had seen rotation of a rigid body and then <clears throat> here after we are going to consider rotation about a fixed a fixed axis one this is very important so rotation about yeah a fixed axis that's what we are going to consider the general rotation uh of a rigid body in all possible direct uh, axis mm. is considered uh, a topic for advanced study we are not going to consider it and so what we have is uh, uh, let us say rigid body it is one axis this is a fixed axis and you consider a particle here and then uh, it will be making a circular motion its radius is let us say ri this particle has got a mass mi here right then the kinetic energy k the kinetic energy of the rotating body i will denote it by capital k this is equal to so this whole body is uh, can be viewed as different masses m1 m2 etc i am considering a typical mass which is located at distance ri from the fixed axis and uh, it at the distance so the kinetic energy of this particular object is uh, i can consider this as sum of all the kinetic energies i am not indicating i runs over what over all particles this is equal to half of sum of sigma over i 
m i this is uh, uh, what is velocity this is v i r i omega this is whole square and right yeah. so half mv squared v is uh, omega cross r this is uh, perpendicular it will have r i and uh, r i times omega uh, and omega is the same for every particle within this rigid body and uh, whereas this r i the distances will change so this is equal to half of omega squared is common and you are simply left with summation over i m i r i squared and this is the quantity which is known as the moment of inertia so moment of inertia of a rigid body is simply uh, sigma or summation over mi r i squared where r i is the distance from a fixed axis and so always talk about moment of inertia of a body about an axis that is important i can also consider the moment of inertia of same body about some other axis so there is no point in simply mentioning what is the moment of inertia of a sphere or any object you should say that the question you should ask is what is the moment of inertia of a body about an axis and that is very important and right okay this is something this equation is uh, this is usually denoted by i therefore i have k the total kinetic energy is equal to half of i omega squared this equation reminds us of uh, this is something similar to this is something similar to something similar to in the case of linear motion we say that half m v squared so therefore the uh, <coughs> when you see this equation immediately a bell should ring in your mind what is that uh, you would like to compare this in the case of linear motion the expression for kinetic energy is half mv squared this is something similar to that right now we are going to consider there are certain important properties of uh, moment of inertia so that is the next topic for discussion so properties of moment of inertia i i the symbol is used for moment of inertia is simply call it as this. first one first thing is uh, uh, the like uh, uh, kinetic energy of a uh, the, uh, the sorry uh, the moment of inertia of a body does not depend on omega namely the angular velocity uh, does not depend on then what does it depend on it depends on mass it uh, it depends on actually mass distribution rather to say so mass distribution in terms of shape and size okay this is the first property then second property and uh, it's a characteristic of the rigid body it is a characteristic it's very typical to uh, each rigid body characteristic of a rigid body then uh, and also not only that and also about an axis and also about an axis also an axis about which it rotates it means the rigid body rotates now just like mass is considered to be the measure of inertia of a a, a particle or a body similarly uh, moment of inertia is a measure of the rotational inertia 
In the case of linear motion, you can call it as a, it's a measure of translational inertia. Here it is a measure of uh, uh, um, inertia in rotational motion. It's a measure of inertia in rotational motion. And uh, as already told, it is better to keep in mind that it is also a measure, it also depends on mass, shape, size, distribution of mass. Then one more property is there. It says uh, um, the mass does not depend on uh, any axis or any anything. So here it depends on the uh, nature of rotation about an axis, nature of rotation about an axis. Then, uh, it is good to do this exercise whenever you come across uh, any, uh, any physical quantity first time for the new it is better to write down its units and dimensions. What are its uh, dimensions? The mass times L square. So therefore the units now in CGS is kilogram meter square. And remember it's a scalar quantity. Uh, it's a scalar quantity that we need to keep in mind. Next. Um, we will proceed to calculate moment of inertia of a few of uh, certain objects which we come across very frequently in physics. First, um, a thin circular ring. This is the first one thin circular ring. So I have a circular ring like this. It's a fairly simple calculation. Then uh, I need to indicate an axis. Axis is passing through the center. So <clears throat> its radius of the ring is R. At this um, let us say that uh, um, the, <clears throat> the total, this is the axis of rotation and total mass is m. Now I take a typical point here and let us say that mi is the mass. Now what is the definition of moment of inertia? It is a small element. I will take definition of moment of inertia is mi r i squared. So here this uh, so every point on this circular ring is a distance r therefore let us say that mass element is m uh, m i r i squared this is equal to r squared times summation m i summation m i is the total mass of the particle therefore this is m r squared so this is nothing but adding all the masses which are located on this ring. So moment of inertia of a circular ring about an axis passing through its center in a plane perpendicular to the plane of the circular ring. That is important. Okay, I am considering an axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the circle and it also passes through the center. So this is the moment of inertia. Now, as I told you, we are going to consider few examples. We will have one more, uh, one simple example as an illustration. I'm looking for some space. Yes, I have here. Suppose I have, um, I have here three masses. Maybe I'll divide this into two. I can save the space. 
So I have here a, a triangle. Okay, it's an equilateral triangle. A, A. I have uh, M1 is equal to M and uh, M2 is equal to M here at the vertices. M3 is equal to M. So what is the axis I am considering? Axis I am considering is the altitude. So therefore it is A by 2. This is uh, A by 2 here. So moment of inertia of this uh, triangular lamina, it's not a lamina, sorry. The moment of inertia of these three mass, three masses located at the vertices of this uh, equilateral triangle. So I altitude. What is the meaning of I sub altitude? Means moment of inertia of these three masses about this particular uh, altitude is m1 into 0 squared plus m2 into from the axis it is a by 2 whole squared plus again m3 into this is located at distance of a by 2 whole squared so therefore this is equal to 2 times m into a by 2 the whole squared therefore it is m a squared by 2 it's a simple calculation to illustrate that how you how a moment of inertia of a distribution is calculated now we will consider the second example I remember we are uh, calculating the moment of inertia moment, uh, moments of inertia of various objects which we regularly come across and we are going to make use of this next is uh, moment of inertia of a rod uniform rod rod of uniform cross section of uh, mass is uniformly distributed so I am going to consider an axis which is passing through the center center of mass this is the axis uh, uh, suppose I uh, consider this as um, uh, this will come little later huh? this will come little later what I will do is uh, I will put masses here, uh, M here, M here. Uh, sorry, it is a, this is a massless rod, sorry. It's a massless rod. Light rod. At the two ends of it, we have two masses, M1 and M2. And then uh, I want to calculate the moment of inertia of this. This, uh, uh, in principle, it is almost same as this. So moment of inertia about this axis indicate m into uh, l by 2, the whole squared. This is l by 2. This distance is l by 2 plus m into l by 2, the whole squared. Therefore, it will be m l squared by so this is almost same as this. Only thing is, uh, the moment of inertia of the, uh, this figure is uh, turns out to be the same because we are considering the axis passing through M1. Okay. Now there is a concept called radius of gyration. The radius of gyration is like this. So one thing is clear, whenever you calculate moment of inertia of any object, there is going to be a mass term times uh, a quantity which has length squared. There may be some proportionality constants. There may be, there may be certain objects which are going to be uh, numbers. So I'll just call it as number. Now you treat this whole thing as m k squared. So, then uh, you have to calculate k for each of these cases. This is, then k is called as radius of gyration. Why? What is the idea? What this means is that about a particular point, the whole 
the mass of the whole body is located at here at a distance of k because whenever you have moment of inertia to be mk squared what it means there is a mass m which is located from the axis or from a fixed point o at a particular distance k and so the moment of inertia is either expressed as it is or in terms of radius of gyration and we will see in problems and for example in this case uh, when i write it as m k squared then the radius of gyration k is equal to l by root 2 okay now we will consider uh, the, the third example the moment of inertia of a rod which is uniform rod about an axis which is at the one end and so it's a uniform rod rod of uniform cross section so there is a concept called mass per unit length the whole length of the rod is l let us say so what i will do i will consider an element here this is at distance x dx okay now uh, rho is the mass per unit length it is one dimensional therefore it is the mass per unit length we consider this is the axis of rotation okay therefore if rho is the mass per unit length what is the total mass total mass is length times mass per unit length now moment of inertia of this element this particular element dx is is equal to let us say there is whatever is the mass here that times x square this small element is located at distance of x now what is dm it is uh, dx times rho times x square now i want to calculate the total moment of inertia therefore i have to integrate it rho x square dx and at this end it is x is equal to 0 at this end it is x is equal to l therefore i have to integrate between 0 to l so rho into x cube by 3 therefore l cube by 3 this i can write rho l into l squared by 3 rho l is m therefore m l squared by 3 so m l squared by 3 is the moment of inertia of a uniform rod of length l about an axis which is located at one end right then next one we will move a little faster now we will uh, calculate the moment of inertia of a rod uniform rod about an axis passing through the center this is uh, l by 2 this is l by 2 therefore this i can view it as uh, uh, moment of inertia of two rods each rod about an end of the uh, rod therefore it is um, it is <coughs> is equal to m by 2 into l by 2 whole squared by 3 into 2 therefore it is m l squared by 12 5 we are going to calculate moment of inertia of few more objects therefore i will divide this uh, space <coughs> so now moment of inertia of a circular disc it's a circular disc moment of inertia of a circular disc so i have a, a 
circular disc. So this is the center. Center. Okay. Now what I will consider uh, this radius is uh, capital R. Its radius is R. I will consider a, a typical uh, disc here. It has an uh, is an annular space. If I take this as or then the, uh, this annular portion has a width dr. So I consider the moment of inertia to be. Now what is the circumference of this? It is 2 pi r. 2 pi r. Then area is dr. Then what is the mass of this? This is area into mass per unit area. Rho is the mass per unit area. Mass per unit area of the material. And that times this mass is located at a distance of r squared. Therefore, i is equal to 2 pi rho I can take out integral rho cubed dr r going from 0 to capital R. So this is equal to pi rho r to the power of 4 by 2. This is equal to m r squared by 2. Why? The total m is equal to what is the mass of the disk? Area into mass per unit area. Therefore, from here I can split it out pi r squared, pi r squared rho, um, one pi is missing here, I can write, pi r squared rho will become m, the remaining terms. Right? So, like this we have to, now that of a solid cylinder, similarly you can calculate uh, moment of inertia of a solid cylinder, which I am not going to do it. I of a solid cylinder about an axis passing through the about an axis about an axis passing through the center about an axis passing through the center passing through the ah uh, in the uh, axis of the cylinder. This we can work it out. This is again is MR squared by 2. Now I will do this calculation for hollow cylinder. Okay. So I have this hollow cylinder like this, finite hollow cylinder. And then um, this is the axis. Okay, now I'll consider a small element. It's a hollow cylinder. It's a what I call a circular strip band, rather, which is lying on this cylinder. And now, um, what is the length of this? Length of this is 2 pi r because the radius is r and then this length, this is of width dl I will take. Then uh, this hollow cylinder, this is of area, therefore the mass per unit area I will take it as rho. mass per unit area and uh, let me say that uh, this height of the cylinder is uh, h we will take the uh, length of the cylinder rather ok this row and uh, this is located at a distance of r squared 
so this is what is di so if i want to have i i have to integrate it so when i integrate it what will i get 2 i can take out pi i can take out r i can take out rho uh, this is uh, r cube integral d dl is simply l therefore 2 pi r cube rho l okay now now uh, what is the um, mass of the cylinder mass of the cylinder is two pi r is the circumference that into l into rho so this is two pi r l rho so two pi r l rho if i factorize it is 2 pi r l rho into r squared therefore it is m r squared this is what i call it as m the same way you can calculate moment of inertia of various objects but i am going to do the moment of inertia of one object then we will proceed further so this is the moment of inertia of a solid sphere is an important quantity we will be using it again and again so i have a solid sphere about an axis passing through the center so i have a what i consider so this i don't need perhaps oh. Right. Now, I will consider um, a small sphere I will consider a sphere I will consider a sphere of radius uh, r and small increment dr and consider this portion So what I will have this surface area of the smaller sphere is 4 pi r squared so therefore the volume of this region is 4 pi r squared dr and mass of this region is mass of this region is 4 pi r squared dr times rho this whole thing is located at the distance of r so I want the moment of inertia, therefore I want to integrate it. This is R squared, sorry, I forgot it. So this will be 4 pi, 4 pi, 0 to R integration. R to the power of 4, therefore it will be R to the power of 5 by 5 and rho. What is the mass of the sphere? Mass of the sphere volume 4 by 3 pi r cube times rho therefore I can write this i in terms of I can factorize this in terms of I will have 3m 3 by 5 m r squared ok this is the moment of inertia of a sphere about an axis passing through the center. Now we are going to have, uh, uh, we will consider two important theorems. One is called as, there are two important theorems which are repeatedly used in the calculation of moment of inertia problems. One is called as perpendicular axis theorem. This is valid for planar objects. This is 
valid for planar objects. Uh, we state the theorem and uh, proof is not necessary at this stage. However, not complicated. One can learn from some advanced books. Now, what it says is, suppose I have a planar object. It has three axes. X axis, Y axis and Z axis. I want the moment of inertia of this planar object. One wants the moment of inertia of the planar objects about the Z axis. This is equal to what it says is you need to consider two axes perpendicular passing through the planar object. Then this is one is this Ix. Another is this moment of inertia about this y. In other words, if I want the moment of inertia of a planar object passing through an axis perpendicular to the uh, plane of the object, then one needs to consider two perpendicular directions which are concurrent with this axis located on the body. Then if I know the moment of inertia of this, this is let us say, this is Ix if I know then I Y here I know, then I know the moment of inertia about Z, that's the idea. So the, um, <coughs> the moment of inertia, the M I of a planar body about an axis. perpendicular to its plane is equal to the, the sum of moment of inertia about the two perpendicular axes about the two perpendicular axes concurrent with with the perpendicular axis and lying in the plane. Now, we will uh, as I told you, proof is not required, but we will make use of it. I will give you two illustrations. Suppose I consider example one. I consider circular disc. Right? We have a, so I have a circular disc. And uh, X y z right so i want the moment of inertia about z axis that's what i want i z this is same as moment of inertia about i x moment of inertia about y x these two i have to add right so i z i know what is the moment of inertia about z axis of a circular disk where we have calculated earlier of a circular disk that we have calculated it as m r square by 2 moment of inertia of a circular disk. Therefore, i z I know, but I don't know what is i x. i x and i y, you remember this diameter is symmetric, it divides the circle into 2. Therefore, moment of inertia i x should be same as moment of inertia i y. Therefore, 2 times moment of inertia of i x is same as 2 times moment of inertia of i y this is equal to is equal to m r squared by 2 so this implies i x is equal to i y is equal to m r squared by 4 right now i will do one more simple problem so it makes our life easy if I want to calculate the moment of inertia of the circular disk 
about this axis x axis or y axis now circular ring one more example circular ring again no the moment of inertia of a circular ring we have calculated circular ring x axis y axis z axis i need not write everything circular ring i think we have already done moment of inertia of a circular ring where is it uh, we probably that was this. circular ring first we did mr squared that was the first uh, example we considered moment of inertia of a thin circular ring this is mr squared so therefore i z z equal to mr squared so what do we have moment of inertia of x plus moment of inertia of y perpendicular axis theorem this must be same as moment of inertia of this by symmetry 2 times ix is equal to mr squared therefore ix is equal to iy is equal to mr squared by next we are we have to discuss what is known as uh, parallel axis theorem parallel axis theorem what the parallel axis theorem says is uh, it it is uh, sorry before it is applicable to uh, body of arbitrary shape applicable to applicable to body of arbitrary shape unlike the perpendicular axis theorem which is valid only for planar uh, objects and so what we are going to do is that the idea is this this is a uh, solid um <coughs> what we want is that Uh, now we want the moment of given the moment of an uh, passing suppose this is the center this this is the center let us say center of mass this is cm of this object given the moment of inertia about the center of mass about an axis passing through the center of mass i want the moment of inertia of the object about some line l let us say this is known known we want to calculate moment of inertia about l this is equal to what answer is provided by so called this parallel axis theorem what it says is that i l is equal to i suppose i call this as z axis this um, this i will call it as uh, let us say z prime i uh, z prime i z prime is equal to i z i sub z plus mass of the object then the perpendicular distance between them right let me again repeat i know the moment of inertia of this uh, object about an axis passing through the center of mass then i want to calculate if one wants to know the moment of inertia of the same object about some other axis let us say this is the z prime then the moment of inertia about z prime is same as the moment of inertia of the object passing through about an axis passing through the center plus this particular the product of mass into the distance between square of the distance between them and okay now uh, we will uh, we need to fix the axis if you require just x axis here and y axis here just in order to avoid confusions right now we will do two examples we will do two examples first 
an example one. Is already known. This is z axis, this is L by 2, this is L by 2. I want the moment of inertia about the line which is this z prime from one end. In other words, given the moment of inertia of a rod about an axis passing through the center, I want to calculate the moment of inertia of the rod about an axis which is passing uh, th uh, through the one end of the rod. but both these axes are parallel. That is the situation. Right? Then I z prime is equal to uh, we had uh, uh, we, uh, <coughs> we have I z we had calculated sorry. I z is m l squared by 2 m l squared by 12 which we had calculated where we had calculated this this was the example, ah, this is ml squared by 2, 12. Now, I want the moment of inertia about z prime. So, moment of inertia i about z prime is equal to i z plus total mass is m distance between these two lines is L by 2 whole square. Iz is ML squared by 12 plus ML squared by 4. So this is this is uh, this is ML squared by this is 4 uh, 12 1 3 4 ML squared by 3. This we had done moment of inertia of a rod about an axis for, uh, about an axis passing through one end this we calculation we have done so it is a very simple verification of uh, perpendicular axis theorem so one more illustration we will do one more illustration we will do that now i will consider and uh, circular ring moment of inertia of a circular ring example circular ring about about a tangent so I have a circular ring ok this is the diameter I have a tangent the tangent I will call no. I tangent. Okay, so and for this now I need to know the moment of inertia about the diameter I diameter I dia. Right. Now I need two perpendicular axes. So one axis here, other axis have to, let us say that I have to, I will just indicate it here, like this. Uh, I don't need this. Oh my god, so we have to be careful with the diagrams. So this is the I, okay, I diameter. So uh, uh, by perpendicular axis theorem, two times I diameter is equal to the mass square. This we have already done. Therefore i diameter what is mr square mr square is the moment of inertia of the circular ring about an axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the circular ring that is mr square from this i am calculating the moment of inertia of the about the diameter <coughs> this is equal to mr squared by 2 so here i have made use of perpendicular axis theorem 
now i need to know the moment of inertia of this circular ring about this tangent so i tangent now i will make use of parallel axis theorem because i know the moment of inertia about this center right is equal to what is that i want um is equal to about an axis with mr squared mr squared by 2 this is i will write a step therefore it will be i about a diameter plus mass into distance between these two lines is r so r squared so this is equal to mr squared by 2 plus mr squared this is equal to m into r squared by 3 this is an interesting problem in the sense that we are making use of um both the uh, this is parallel axis theorem here we are making use of both the theorems okay so in this case, um, we are going to see some more examples at a later stage let me repeat what we have done in this problem i want to calculate the moment of inertia of this circular ring about the tangent i have to make use of parallel axis theorem i can for that i need to know the moment of inertia of the circular ring about the diameter that we have not calculated so what is that we know we know the moment of inertia of the circular ring about an axis which is perpendicular passing through the center okay that is what is uh, uh, we have it therefore i have uh, that is mr squared therefore the i about diameter moment of inertia about diameter is mr squared by 2 now i can calculate the moment of inertia about the tangent it is moment of inertia about diameter plus mass times the square of the distance between these two parallel lines mr squared for mr squared by 3 and yeah to summarize what we have done is uh, we found that the moment of inertia uh, is the the concept of moment of inertia is the rotational analog of mass in linear motion and then uh, we have uh, calculated the moment of inertia of various objects and we have also seen two rather very important theorems which are repeatedly uh, one makes use of so called the perpendicular axis theorem and parallel axis theorem the perpendicular axis theorem is uh, valid for planar objects parallel axis theorem is valid for object of any arbitrary shape and size only thing we need to know the moment of inertia uh, of ab about an axis passing through the center of mass of that systems life is very simple if the systems are symmetric and we will see in next class